easy to look back at it, but at 13-7, you would have felt pretty good. I mean, I was thinking of taking the Jets just because of two things. You know, the Jets would try to play hard on national television. The Ravens would never really be in doubt. But you, you worry about the second thing, the backdoor cover. Because I figured Jackson would get taken out of his blowout. I was surprised he stayed in the game. Why was he still in the game? Unless this injury was Fugazi to begin with. Yeah, he didn't and he look really, like he had any He really problem. wasn't that hurt. And, and, and to his credit, he said he was 100. So he obviously was telling the truth. But I'm just wondering if this injury was really anything at all. But I, I can't kill the Jets today. They're they depleted lost to a by team. injury. They're on the road on a Thursday against a team that I, I agree with Peter. I think they're the best team in football. You know, we'll see what happens with the 49ers and we'll see what happens with the Patriots. But right now, this is the team to beat. They're home on national television. And here's the dangerous thing about the Ravens. They're so good, but yet there could be enough doubters about the quarterback and enough believers in the Patriots where they could still have a chip on their shoulder. I think that's why they're covering because they still think they have something to prove because there are some people that doubt the quarterback, that doubt when push comes to shove, they can beat the Patriots at a big spot, and I think that's going to embolden them to make a run right to the Super Bowl. Why do you not believe in yourself? You said you were going to pick the Ravens till they let you down. I mean, you don't even believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, who do you believe in, Peter? You know what? It's a great point. <laughs> I'm ashamed. It, it, it would, I would have been sitting here. I should have thrown three points off you him. I'd be sitting oh, here relaxed. Oh, smoking and I'll tell a cigar. You, I don't know how you guys feel. I, I hate the slate of games. Oh, my oh, God. It's the, awful. It's awful. an awful slate of games. So it's like you laid off a team that's been scorching hot. And, and, and has done nothing but cover, and now I'm looking at the picks this week, and, it's, and, and as we know, it's moving day yet again. Yeah. It's another big week, and I, I'm disappointed. And RJ gave us a winner. He said take them in the first half. Now, it, it, it got a little hairy there as, as oh, the Jets they, were driving. But they got it. They got it. They, they Even got if it was nine and a half, he thought it was seven. How about this? How about this? They covered in the first half. They covered in the second half. They hit the over. Everything you could have bet on the Ravens yesterday. I think, I think Lamar Jackson hit the over on yards, certainly hit the over on touchdowns I I just find these stats to be so unique that he's throwing for such a low number of passes at one point yesterday they said he's completed 13 passes he's thrown for four touchdowns it's just bizarre numbers it's a really unique thing and also I, I said this earlier in the season this team the Ravens have always been great with free agents I mean how good is Ingram to have I mean what what a weapon well, they have. what they did was a lot of teams don't do this they have a quarterback with a certain skill set and they built around them. They, they brought the people in. They brought tight ends in that can block and also catch the passes out of the, uh, back, uh, out of the backfield. They brought in running backs that can, you know, Jackson could either put it in their stomach or pull it back. They, they built around their they, specific skill set, and teams don't do that. The Bears haven't done that with Trubitsky. And, and the bottom line is the Eagles haven't done that the last couple of years with Wentz either. You've got to build around the skill set of your quarterback. It's like with Eli. They didn't build a great offensive line when Eli was a quarterback, and Eli can't move. So you have to know what you have, and, and the, the Ravens knew what they had. And give them even more credit because they had their forever quarterback in Flacco, and they had no issues whatsoever to make the transition. And there wasn't a lot there. You remember, go back to the playoffs. It was like, well, we're not really sure about this guy. They they believed. And they were able to move on from Flacco, who had won them a Super Bowl, who was a forever Raven, and said, we can be better. That's something the Giants never did. I mean, the Giants wanted to hold on to get one more for Eli, one more for Eli. People, people, there was a time, I know, it, it, to me it sounds crazy now, there was a time where the Flacco-Eli thing got thrown around quite a bit of them being in a, a similar category, talent-wise. And I, I think Eli is, of course, the better player that clutch player although don't forget Joe Flacco's playoff numbers are astounding they are career wise so but you're right they knew the time it was and he could still go get a paycheck somewhere well, else it's not like they screwed him over he went and got money and they got to move on to Lamar Jackson and I'll tell you this this may be the biggest announcement you hear on the show today this is big news in the world of sports oh wow I am see how everybody got quiet yeah you can tell they care I am affirmatively rooting for the Ravens in the playoffs this year why because I want a team to root for. Robert Griffin III is their backup quarterback. I'm not fighting with the people in my area. The people who left the Redskins were smart. I should have done it. Instead, I'm stuck with my terrible team. But guess what? I'm not fighting with my friends who root for the Ravens. I'm just going, I'm not, I'm not gonna buy a shirt. You but might. I'm, no, I, no, I would never do that. I can't do it in football. You bought a Nationals hat. Yeah, but I always had Nationals hats because I'm from D.C. I'm not from Baltimore. I'm not buying anything Ravens. But I am affirmatively hoping Robert Griffin III wins a Super Bowl with the Ravens, and I will enjoy watching them. They, they have, they're a pretty magical team. And if we get a rematch from that Ravens 49ers game from a few weeks ago, 
That would be an incredible Super Bowl. And you, you know what I love in, in, in a sports time where it's all about let's judge everything quarter by quarter. Lamar Jackson could not have been worse in the, in, the, in the playoffs last year. Could not have been worse. He looked hapless. He looked like he was lost, that he had no future. Did they bag him? Did they give up on him? Absolutely They not. doubled down on him, and they made it easier for him. And now he's going to win the MVP oh. of the league, and they might win the Super That's Bowl. That's why when you have a good coach and you have a good structure, you know, we throw that word around. It's, it's a hockey term now, structure. Got to have structure in the game, structure in our culture. Well, when you have a good coach and you have the right people pushing the right buttons, you can say, all right, our quarterback is broken. We're going to fix him. Instead of getting rid of him, bringing in somebody else, we're going to put in a system, as you said, bringing the right guys for the skill set of the player that we have. And when you're not flying by the seat of your pants trying to make bad coaching out of something, this is a well-coached team. This is a team that, yeah, that the foundation that was set by Ozzie Newsom in Baltimore, there is a culture there that just seems to work. And when you don't have it, and certainly the Jets and Giants, Jets, we're, we're going to have to wait and see. Giants clearly don't have it right now, and that's the difference. Now, 